This is a part two and will be the last video I am making on this situation with Jeremy and Adopt Me's feud. I'm on no one's side and you'll see that in the latter half of the video. If you don't want to watch the last video, which will be in the description, here's a quick summary of what happened in under a minute with Jeremy's ban, with both sides of the story taken into perspective. June 18th, 2020, the YouTuber Jeremy was banned from Adopt Me. The Adopt Me team stated four reasons for his ban, which included breaking Roblox terms of service, his behavior towards Leia Ash, which happened earlier, and videos that claim that they were targeted towards lead developer of Adopt Me, Josh Ling. The note reads, In summary, Jeremy bought items for real money, breaking Roblox and Adopt Me rules. Jeremy insulted Adopt Me, our team, several players, and other YouTubers. Jeremy made three videos that resulted in fans harassing me directly. Jeremy made videos that included false information. Jeremy since responded on Twitter with a couple of tweets that actually took the situation quite maturely. He owned up and apologized for his mistakes. Adopt Me said they weren't going to respond further. However, since then, let's view Jeremy's newer statements on the side of the story. Let's get started with our introduction. Alright, you're caught up, let's continue. As always on this channel, we are sure to show both sides of the story, as we did in the last video. On June 21st, 2020, Jeremy made a video titled The Adopt Me Experience. It's 22 minutes long and goes into a lot of detail. In fact, I feel it's too much detail. As well today, he also made another video. Although Adopt Me's proof is still standing invalid, these videos debunk some of Adopt Me's proof with receipts and proof of their own. Kaneko even made a video on this himself. Jeremy is banned from Adopt Me and has accepted his ban, but he isn't going down without a fight, nor is Adopt Me. He threatened to sue is and now trying to explain that Adopt Me didn't give him a fair chance at first in his own words, and that the feud continues. Although Adopt Me isn't responding anymore, Jeremy and Adopt Me seem to be both taking jabs at each other and it's almost been two weeks. Does this information update anything? After seeing Jeremy's side, how can we make a fair conclusion? What happened in the video? These are a lot of questions that people are asking after watching Jeremy's videos and tweets. My name is Nuki Alex, and in today's video, we'll be going through the rest of the Adopt Me situation with a non-biased perspective and summarizing it, and seeing if Jeremy's proof lives up to the length. Let's get started. Yo, what's up, Hash Jane Nerd Squad, and welcome back to another video. But before we get started in this video, don't forget to subscribe for the latest Roblox drama, news, tips and tricks, and more. Don't forget to turn on the bell so that way you never miss out on one of my videos. This showcase is known as Tora Island by Buildite. I recommend you check it out and the link will be in the description. Anyways, let's get started with the organization of this video. Normally, we organize our video in such a way to get a non-biased perspective. By avoiding bias, we can get a fair perspective without worrying about personal preference. In today's video, we will be going through, firstly, the tweets, secondly, the video summary and Adopt Me's counter-argument, and lastly, my personal opinion on the subject. Although I am not a Jeremy fan by any means, it's okay if you disagree, just as long as you're respectful in the comments. Which side are you on? Let me know down below. Let's get started with our first point. Same day, June 18th, 2020, when we made the video, Jeremy responded to his side of the story. He claimed that other Adopt Me YouTubers did the same thing. He also claimed that the Adopt Me team would delete their video about them because it didn't present enough proof towards him. Here are some of his tweets regarding that. It seems Jeremy was being really immature in these tweets, which says, at Play.me, I have some information regarding big Adopt Me YouTubers buying stuff with real money. I think this should get us some banned laughing emoji. It doesn't matter, it's just drama. They'll delete the video soon. They didn't present it well, it was just expecting more info with proof. These tweets were later deleted because a lot of people pointed out they were immature. I feel this is a fault of Jeremy's, although I am not biased. The video actually presented quite a bit of proof against Jeremy. However, a lot of the claims were simply just claims and couldn't be validated. This is where Jeremy starts to make his video around 6 days later. There are a lot of deleted tweets in between, including the one that says shut up star creator that is often clowned on. That one was deleted too. 
After that, Jeremy then ended up tweeting this, which said, At play adopt me. Here's my take on everything. Let's read the description quickly. It says, The adopt me experience, Roblox. I think we have achieved the full Roblox adopt me experience at this point. Tweet, Instagram, etc. And there are the rest of his links. As I've said before, I believe this video is too long. Jeremy does cover a lot of information, but it is 22 minutes long. A lot of people don't want to watch the video simply because of how long it is. Although at the beginning of the video, Jeremy mentions that he wants people to watch the full video. At the beginning of the video, let's go through all the points. Jeremy mentions that they made a monetized video accusing him of a lot of different things. Jeremy's video is monetized too, you can see the ads which as a YouTube Partner Program member, I can explain. It means that Adopt Me's Jeremy video is only making 10% of these ads, but Jeremy's video is monetized too, which makes this statement that he goes on for about two minutes for invalid and hypocritical, which gives Adopt Me the advantage of that argument. Since both are monetized, both cannot call it the other for making money on it. Next, Jeremy comes in with a point at around two minutes and 40 seconds in the video, where he says that people that have nothing to do with it, like his girlfriend, are being attacked. That's a statement that's both valid and correct. Both videos and both sizable fan bases are going against each other, and nobody deserves any hate. Because truly, this doesn't involve any of us. Jeremy's next point is that they tried to make their blog size reachable numbers by getting it to around every platform in around 4 minutes of the video. This is a point that we again do not know their true intentions of, but I understand where the point is coming from completely. 4 minutes and 8 seconds into the video, Jeremy starts to debunk some Adopt Me's claims. The first one comes from the blog where Team Adopt Me says they tried their best to ignore the situation. Jeremy actually does make a good point on this because in the video, he shows receipts of both clashing towards one another. It's another reason why I think nobody is in the right in this situation, because both are fueling the fire ultimately. The second point that Jeremy makes is his critique he felt was valid towards the game being low effort, which then leads on to the third point that Jeremy makes towards Adopt Me, which they did not take the situation privately and instead tweeted about it, in reference to the lead developer Josh Ling. He says the entire situation would have been avoided if one team member would have personally reached out to Jeremy himself. The fourth point Jeremy makes in the video is certain things in the blog that he owned up to, like messaging the Adopt Me members to get into contact as to why he was blocked and about how he felt he didn't go the right way about it. Halfway through the video, the fifth point he makes is he feels his clips were used out of context, which again is a point we don't really know the answer to. The sixth point he makes is to own up for his actions towards Leia. The seventh point he makes is that he did not mean for hate to happen due to disclaimer he put to send no hate. We all know this doesn't really work though. The eighth point he makes in the video is that Josh claims to have thick skin, but instead gives a reaction to Jeremy, which is a valid point. The rest of the video that are points that are not needed in my opinion. In Jeremy's video, to summarize, the key point that he makes is that the Adopt Me team did not react to Jeremy's mistakes the best and fueled the fire, although Josh giving in to Jeremy yet blocking him. I believe this video took some time and thought and was actually a decent response after watching the full 22 minutes of it. But a lot simply wasn't needed, such as the USD buying, repeating over and over again, etc. Overall, he makes 8 points in the video. I'll state them again. They say, Adopt Me didn't try their best to ignore it and gave in. He felt his critique was valid towards the game. The third point is that the Adopt Me tween didn't reach out. And the fourth point was apologies. And then the last three points are about Adopt Me slandering him and giving in. The rest of his tweets are mostly positive tweets about fan art, which is the way it should be kept. I believe both sides should just kind of move on from this in a way. In today's video, he tries to paint Josh Ling as a terrible person. In the video, he says that Diggory Doos and Instrument are sacred object natives. I'm a First Nations member and my family is First Nation, and I can tell you that absolutely none of that is true, respectively. A didgeridoo actually has a lot different meaning. If someone doesn't like an instrument, it's a lot different than the tobacco ceremony, which is held to a lot more of a sacred degree. At this point, it's just one feud after another with Jeremy trying to go after Adopt Me and such and vice versa. Let's continue on to Adopt Me's side of the story.
Whether Jeremy apologized to the claims he owned up to, there is no doubt that Jeremy is not innocent. Nor is Adopt Me, but definitely Jeremy of a higher degree. Adopt Me had every right to ban Jeremy from their game because he broke Roblox terms of service. However, Adopt Me's lead developer Josh Lang could have handled the situation more maturely. A lot of the things Adopt Me said still have a lot of proof. The things that still stand after the video debunking them are Jeremy still bought items for real money. The excuses he made in the video came off as immature and misleading. He should have just admitted to the mistake and not said how he made the mistake, because this comes off as excusive. Most people with a basic knowledge of Roblox know that USD buying is against the rules. Jeremy did insult Adopt Me multiple times and so did Josh Sling with Jeremy back. This stance is valid. Jeremy did put out many mean statements on Twitter that were apologized for. Jeremy had around one video with false information. In conclusion, Jeremy's response was okay. It wasn't the best, but it wasn't the worst either. In conclusion as well, Adopt Me is still in the right about most of their points, but some of them can be debunked on the more personal end of things. Thank you so much for watching my video. I'd appreciate if Jeremy fans and Adopt Me fans could hear me out on this one. This video took me a lot longer to make and I'm sorry about that. Hopefully I'll see you on the next video and happy Canada Day to all of my Canadian followers and friends. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.